I'm Phil Lister, and welcome to volume two of the all new series by Lister Model Works, Model Crafters. In this volume, we're going to be building the new Monarch Models, Ghost of Castlemere. Okay, the kit was actually very well engineered, and as you can tell from these various shots here, there was quite a bit of texture. I didn't have to do any airbrushing on this kit at all. Everything was brush painted by hand and then dry brushed. The only airbrushing I did was a little bit later, uh, you'll see on the bricks, I'll, I'll even demonstrate that. As you can see though, there was quite a bit of texture. Now in this video, I didn't really cover building the kit, although I am going to demonstrate or show uh, several areas that weren't exactly problems, but where you may run into a problem if you're a beginner. Here's the instruction sheet, and here's some of the parts. These are the, the two main wall sections here. They just sort of keyed together very nicely. No putty work had to be done at all there at all. It was just snap it together, put some glue in there, hit it with a little bit of kicker, and uh, even the figure was broken broken down rather nicely. There's the, the back piece and then the chest piece. Everything was keyed very nicely. Um, I didn't have to do any putty work on the body sections at all. A little bit on the head, which I'll demonstrate later. Here's the front wall section that connected to the steps. The legs fit together very nicely, no gaps, no uh, no sort of overhang. All I had to do was uh, scrape the seams a little bit, use a little bit of sandpaper. Everything was primed and ready to go. And here's the head, two halves, front and a back. And the only other part was the jaw section. And again, this was one of the problem areas that I'm going to cover a little bit later on. Nice fit, nice snug fit. Again, no fit problems whatsoever. It's a new kit, and of course the molds are relatively new, so there shouldn't have been any problem. Now here's the base, already assembled. And the only problem area, not really even a problem, but there were some gaps where the window fit to the base. And you can leave the gaps, and then you can put like streaming liquid of water or something running down there and all I did was I ran a bead of glue on the back side just to sort of fill in the gap and that way when I painted the back side the light wouldn't come through. I went ahead and primed the entire base using Krylon Gray Primer. I just gave it a nice even coat and allowed it to dry for 20, about 24 hours. Now, to start the base, I started applying black black, apple barrel flat black, and again, I just brush painted all the black all over the entire base. I was going for a gray brick, not a brown colored brick, but I was going for gray. So I started with a base coat of black, good solid black. And again, everything was brush painted. I used a, a fairly wide, thick brush here, and I just simply hand brushed everything all over the base. Nice, even coverage. Now I'm going to start the dry brushing process on the bricks. Now, as I said in the last video, I do quite a bit of color mixing. And as you can see here, I'm using a plastic palette tray and I start with some black and I mix in a little bit of white and you just want to mix that up until you have a nice gray color something that's pleasing to your eye there's no magic formula here and you just want to get the paint on the brush tips and then you just sort of scrub against the surface going against the details and as you can see the paint is just simply hitting on the surface. It's not going into all the little crevices. That's what makes all the detail really pop. So the gray is on the surface, on all that texture. That's what really brings out the texture. Now you can see here where I airbrushed 
in between the mortar lines. That sort of emphasized the, the black mortar lines, brought out the, it just kind of exaggerated those lines to make them, to make them look a little bit more like stonework. Um, as far as the torch, I went ahead and I base coated the metal parts in black, and then I painted the actual uh, wooden torch brown, and I'm just sort of touching up the little areas in between there. You can also dry brush that wooden texture, and you can also dry brush the metal to, to really bring out the texture or the, you know, emphasize the lines. Now, for the flame itself, I base coated it with yellow. I came back with some future floor wax. Now, this stuff is, is great for when you're doing washes. Why? Well, for one thing, using a gloss, washes just seem to work a little bit better. Plus, the future floor wax is self-leveling. And I just simply mixed some red paint in with the future floor wax, and I made a type of a soupy kind of wash. It was probably a little bit thicker than most washes, and I simply blended uh, the future and the paint together till I had this nice soupy mixture. And then I simply went ahead and applied the soupy mix mixture over top of the yellow, once the yellow was good and dry. And you just want to sort of blob it on and then allow it to drip in, you know, back into the, you know, back into the cup. And you can also, once you have it coated, you can come back with a little bit of water and you can, you know, just sort of clean it up a little bit. You can go in there and, you know, try to even it out a little bit. You don't want it blobby too much. You don't want it to blob in like one area and you just sort of blend it the best you can. And like I said, you sort of want to smooth it out. It's okay for some of the yellow to show through because that's what you're going for. You, you want that to show through. You want that blending. And this way, when this dries, it won't dry. At, well, here it is dry. And as, as you can see, there's plenty of uh, yellow there. Um, so the, you know, the, the, the red or the orange comes through within and the yellow is sort of like on the outside little areas there, almost like you've dry brushed it. Another really nice detail of this kit was this owl. This owl was a real joy to paint. I started with a very dark gray base coat and uh, you just coated the whole, I just simply coated the whole thing. And again, I'm using that palette and I'm mixing some gray. Here I go again with the gray. Uh, I tried to vary the, you know, the gray somewhat so that everything doesn't have the same tonal value. And then uh, again with the dry brushing, I simply started dry brushing the owl, uh, the light gray mixture very lightly over the outermost feathers of the owl. And this is this just simply adds so much. It, it adds so much dimension to the model. Because again, you're you're just simply uh, touching over the the uh, molded in texture, the sculpted in texture. Sculptors put a lot of time into into these kits creating all this texture and dry brushing the kits really really brings out all of that texture. Then I took a fine point detailed brush and a darker gray and I simply went in between the lines just to sort of define the little indentations here and there. I did around the eyes. I also came back with some white and a, and a small brush and I hit around the eyes and the little horns. The rat was dry brushed in brown after base coating in a darker brown. The scorpion was done in a dark brown and then dry brushed into a dark red. Now here I assembled the, the body, but if you'll notice I left the two front jacket halves off. So this is so I could paint the shirt. And uh, what I'm going to do though before I paint the shirt is I mixed up a, a kind of a caramel brown and I'm going to base coat the ribs with this. I'm starting with a darker color and I'm going to come back and dry brush that uh, a sort of a bone color, almost like an ivory color. And again, all these colors are custom mixed and uh, 
this way um, I can I can get the color I, I want. And here I'm just dry brushing over the ribs with a kind of an ivory color. Always remember that dry brushing is a dark to light process. Over a darker base coat, you're going to want to dry brush a lighter coat. That's what really makes all those details pop. The skin, I started with a, a base coat of a rather dark gray. Now here, you'll notice the sash, the shirt, are all base coated. Now I'm going to come back over the shirt and dry brush. And the sash will also get dry brushed. Now the one problem area was the jaw. They don't exactly show you how to cement all three of those parts together. But the jaw piece highlighted here, you're going to want to glue at a slight angle. Now when you do that, it creates a gap here where I've applied some two-part epoxy putty, and then I've sculpted over that. I had to sculpt in the, the hairlines, the beard, the uh, part of the beard. And now here I am, after the putty's dried, I'm base coating uh, all the areas in a dark gray. I'm then coming back with that ivory color, but I've, I've altered the color slightly with, a, with another color, a little bit more brown, and... Uh, I dry brushed over that to bring out all the detail in the face. After that, I did come back with a slightly darker color because I wasn't totally satisfied with that lighter shade. And I used a slightly darker brown. Then the hair, I decided to go with white or, or give him totally you know, white, you know, grayish hair. So I, I, br I dry brushed all the hair in white. Now the coat halves have been glued on and all the clothing has been base coated. The pants, the coat, the, uh, the stockings. Now here, this is after a little bit of dry brushing. I used a lighter shade of brown over that darker base coat and I wanted to give the clothing some wear and tear. And his stockings or knickers have been base coated and the bones protruding through have been painted. And just like with the face, the hands were uh, base coated in gray and then dry brushed with this uh, dark ivory, almost like a pale flesh color. And this again brings out all of that detail, all those wrinkles, all those lines. That's what you want. Now I base coated the chains in black and then I dry brushed with a little bit of silver and then a little bit of orange for rust. That really brought out the texture of these chains. After I glued on the chains to the back of the head, and I glued the chain to the ankle, the model was then glued to the base, and it was then completed.